So if you notice the slide, is it started? Uh, let's see. Um, this says sign in for the Google Drive. Oh, there we go. We're good. Thanks. So basically, so train your brain for success, right? That is a deliberately generic title because we all define success differently, right? We might be a better student, better parent, better athlete, do better in school. It doesn't really matter what we define for success. The critical factor in our success is the ability of our brains to change and be, process information quickly with better focus. So I'm gonna go through some slides in the beginning just to kind of give you some context where I came from, how we developed this. Along the way, I'm gonna introduce some concepts you may or may not be aware of, but the goal is to get a bunch of them out there as quickly as I can so we can get to the exercise because that's the most important thing we're gonna do today. I'll be in the lobby out, out in the back afterwards, so any questions, please come up and ask me about them. I'm happy to discuss this as long as you need. But the most important thing you're gonna experience is that when you leave today, your brains will be different than they are now. Okay, so we talk, let's talk about success. So basically, for me, um, it says sign in for your Google Drive browser. Do I need that or? I can manually do this if I need. Oh, there we go. Okay, so success, right? So many, many years ago, I was trying to support my family. I was working in a restaurant, and I was one of the best waiters. On a Friday, the, the owner said, hey, John, I had to fire the manager. I want you to take over. I thought, this is my chance to shine. I can be successful. I know the restaurant. I know, the, I know everything. I know the menu. I know the customers, right? So to me, success was going to be on that Friday night having it the best night ever. Unfortunately, it was the worst night ever. The busboy that we had depended on all along the time and actually took for granted, right, was sick, sent his cousin who'd never waited uh, bus tables before, and so that night was a disaster because the poor guy was going all over the place, right? Customers would say, I need water, I need um, you know, uh, coffee. Waiters were expecting him to do things he didn't even know how he was supposed to do. Along the way, I had one of the other waiters try to mentor him a little bit, and that was bad, right? Because they didn't understand what they were talking about, and then the waiter wasn't able to pay attention to his customers. So the night was a complete disaster. And so here I am, every in that situation where I want to be successful, I know I can do it, and it's a complete failure. So I spent hours afterwards that night after everything closed, praying about it, thinking about it. What could I possibly do? Because the next night was going to be Saturday, the busiest night of the week. And I saw the seating chart on the wall. Every restaurant has one. It's how they assign you know, the different sections to the wait staff. And I realized that I could draw a path that would pass every table in the restaurant. And I strategically placed the water, the coffee, the silver tray. I hate when they don't replace the silver. And the bus tray. And the next night, all I had to do was instruct the busboy to take that one continuous process throughout the entire restaurant every time do something different. Okay, so basically, that's what I did. I just drew that path. That Saturday night was the best night we'd ever had, right? Because the busboy knew exactly what he had to do. The wait staff knew what, he had, what they had to do. They were free up to do their job. And of course, the owner was happy, which made me happy. But what I discovered there was the importance of process. Because it wasn't me that made it successful. It was the, pro it was the, pro oops, it was the process of relying on that in order for, to, for the busboy. Now, the other great thing about this was, one, because the waiters were free, they could do a better job taking care of the customers. But most importantly for the poor busboy, instead of feeling like he was a burden and let us down, really felt like he contributed to our success, which he had. So basically, you know, Deming says, uh, if you can't define what you, you do as a process, you don't know what you're doing. Think about it. Everything you do is a process, which means if you define it as a process, you have the ability to improve it. So basically from that, I developed um, a lot of work around the, something called the capability maturity model, right? It's a model for uh, assessing the successability of an organization based on how much they rely on process as opposed to people. Ad hoc, most of us are there, right? Ad hoc, you hire a lot of good people, they have different skills, they do what they're good at, but sometimes it could be like herding cats. 
Organizations will then try to do what I try to do in the airport, I mean at the airport, at the restaurant. They'll have an experienced person try to mentor an inexperienced person. Good mentor, good mentee might work well. Otherwise, it can be a disaster because you're, the, the young person, the inexperienced person still feels kind of like a burden. And now you've given your experienced person extra work, which can burn them out. So the defined level is the most important in any organization. Define what has to be done, have your experienced people define it, hand it off to an inexperienced new person. That way that your, your good people now can be free to do the creative, proactive things they love to do and add more value to, to the operation. And your new person now can follow the process, do almost the same quality work, and feel like they're really contributing. Very, very important. So I built a career out of that. In fact, the point is I got to a point as a consultant where they called me a project rescue specialist, right? So I rescued really high level critical big projects for companies like Motorola, Aon Insurance, AJ Gallagher Insurance. Didn't matter what it was. If I applied this approach, I walk into a brand new team, we got them on board with this. Every project, no matter what condition they were in, became more success successful, relying on process instead of people. Then I got the biggest challenge ever in my life. My brother came back from Iraq in 2006. Um, he said, IEDs, improvised explosive devices, are killing us. Can you help? He came back with a bronze star, lost several of his men to IEDs. And I thought, wow, maybe this is a chance that I could help save lives as opposed to just help businesses make more money. Talked my way into an event out of 29 Palms, California. It's the largest Marines training base called IED Industry Day. And the key uh, purpose of this was to bring contractors from all over the world to these long weekends where they uh, inundate us with as much information about IEDs as possible. All the trigger devices. Um, they blew stuff up, right? We followed these young Marines, which basically the same age as if you're in college, you're about the same age or maybe below as some of these very young Marines who have to make life or death decisions um, under combat situations. They led us around the different um, uh, exercises, and what occurred to me was um, uh, that the difference between success and failure often in really intense environments often is intuition, right? I'd have two Marines, um, uh, you know, they would tell me that they were going down the street or going down the alley, they sensed danger. They sensed it and they executed on that sense and they went a different way and they said, you know, the guys behind me kept going, they didn't sense it and they got blown up. So why two Marines, similar demographics, similar training, one has better intuition. And that's when I got the insight, It's kind of like a God moment, right? An intuition, I'm shaking hands with the base commander at the last day of this exercise, and I thought, what if we could apply that same process reengineering approach to the brain, right? Because instead of scattered thoughts, we can define the mental processes that are critical to success and train them, then perhaps we could create better we call it anticipation, but you would call it intuition. Just at that time, again, timing was perfect. There was a book, I highly recommend this book, Norman Doidge wrote, How the Brain Changed Itself, talks about neuroplasticity. Now, some of you may be aware of neuroplasticity and some not. The key about neuroplasticity is nothing we can create, it's just the capability of our brains God has given us to change from stimulation. Whatever you repeat will start to be, start form those ruts, right, that are gonna be harder to break out of, or easier to follow. So everything we do or think is based on neuroplasticity, the ability of our brains to change. And so I created the field of applied neuroplasticity, where I applied that process reengineering methodology to the brain, right? And the first part of that was to define the processes we want to improve. You're gonna experience this in a few minutes when we get to the exercise. So what we need to do is train the brain to break the information down and think it through before we execute gives us that anticipation and then execute on it. The, the second really critical piece of research that came out at the same time was out of MIT, and they found that robust stimulation will start to change your brain, not in weeks or months, but immediately. Robust stimulation, the way I've applied it, is we stimulate the parts of your brain critical to executive function, your ability to make decisions. At the same time, we stimulate the interface from the brain to the real world. Right? We want all those connections to be faster and stronger as well, which incidentally is why digital programs like Lumosity or Cogmet and stuff, you always get better at the scores, but studies show very real, minimal real-world benefits because you're not interfacing with the real world. That's actually an um, EEG of my daughter doing the same exercise you're going to do in a little bit. 
right? Those are all the connections throughout the brain, both hemispheres, all four lobes, and memory simultaneously. That's the stimulation we want to give it. I then applied an agile approach. Agile approach means continuous improvement. So every group I work with, even this week, I've worked with high school kids. We did a family games night for high school kids. I'm working with your gymnastics team. Um, uh, Marine still will do some vet work tonight and tomorrow. We constantly adjust the program so it's always providing the best results. That's the agile approach to it. And as, as a result, I got a contract from the Marine Corps to have a full overblown DOD experiment to see if this could even work, right? This is back in 2007. No one had ever thought of this before. We didn't know if it was gonna work. So part of the experiment was I had a control group and I had my pilot group of Marines, and I asked for the worst platoon of the battalion. So, so a battalion, I mean, a battalion's about 1,000, a platoon's about 40. So these guys really struggled, right? A lot of trauma, they lost 16 guys a cycle before, post-traumatic stress disorder, concussions, failing their um, academic courses as well. Three guys even tried to commit suicide. Better with them for three months, developed the exercises for my program, one of which, again, a derivative you're gonna do today. Three months later, one of the best performances ever. Not only the best performing platoon in that battalion, but when they went through their final pre-deployment training in 29 Palms, California, the instructor says the best performance they'd ever seen, and the IQ test before and after also showed a significant improvement. That was so successful that the schoolhouse on the base had me establish a mental performance center of excellence. So through that process, I was able to, to train their instructors how to use these programs. Just a few amazing results. One of the toughest courses for young Marines is the squad leaders course. Okay, these are young guys your age. You're gonna lead 16 guys into combat, making life or death decisions that colonels used to make in the past. Average score across the Marine Corps, 82, several drops. It's deliberately hard. When we introduce combat brain training, the highest scores ever, 94 average, and no drops. The next class we introduce this, I had the teachers do this, the instructors do this through our Center of Excellence. Scout Sniper is one of the toughest programs in all of the military, right? 20 to 30, sometimes 60% dropout rate. With this program, only one drop and the highest marksmanship scores ever at the schoolhouse. From there, it's spread through the military. So I've changed, as Brenda mentioned, it's Navy SEALs, snipers, pilots. It doesn't matter who I worked with, high performing, or low performing, because every group I worked with had been deployed several times, suffered a lot of mental trauma and physical trauma to their brains. Everyone, by doing this together, the whole unit, every unit improved significantly. So then I came to the to civilian world, and so I'm gonna give you three examples of areas where there's success, right? So how about uh, athletics? What is success? In athletics, it's performing better, right? So. One of my favorite clients is a top quarterback up in the Canadian Football League, Trevor Harris. First team I worked, the first year I worked with him, he just became a starting quarterback for the Ottawa Red Blacks. By the end of the season, his stats were 10 points higher than Tom Brady's. Along the way, the team was leading in sacks allowed, so he said, John, you gotta protect the quarterback, so I donated an hour to the offensive football line via Zoom. No sacks for the next three games, and so they brought me up to work with the whole team the next year, and they went all the way to the Grey Cup. He says he can get into flow state, which we call being in the zone, by doing these exercises. Again, something you'll experience. So how about classes, right? So I had a, an army friend who was an advisor of an inner city high school, right? Inner city schools, a lot of trauma they're dealing with, a lot of negative behavior, and poor grades. I did the same thing I did with the Center of Excellence, showed them how to do the exercises three times a week, about 15 minutes each time, over eight weeks, their ACT scores went up three full points average. They went from the worst to the best uh, class in the school with ACT scores. Much less negative incidences and better grades. And finally, how about emotional trauma? One of my favorite clients, Robert, severe depression. His mom asked me to work with him. I first started working with Robert. He's sitting in a corner of a sofa doing it via Zoom in a hoodie, scruffy beard, just not engaged at all. By the third session, he was actively engaged and doing the exercises, and after the sixth session, he joined a gym, was working out every day, um, had gotten his job for the first time, and his mom could not believe the improvements from depression to really, really high performing. And I checked in with him about a year after we started, he lost 100 pounds, still going strong. So those are the kind of things that can happen when we change your brain, because we're not dealing with psychology, we're not dealing with the mind, and we're not dealing with learning, 
we're dealing with the brain, which is like the processor in your computer. You upgrade your computer, everything works better. You upgrade your brain, everything works better. So I've worked with anyone you can possibly think of, probably since 2007, I've worked with probably close to 10,000 people in any, any, any different background you can possibly think about. Happy to talk about that out in the, the lobby. Everyone has gotten better. And that's because, again, everything depends on our brain, right? No matter what we do, we improve our brain processing, we can do better at it. So I, I talked a little fast. I'm trying to get to that. The next point is the most important because I want you to experience how such a simple program can make a, such a powerful difference in your brain. So we have it on the screen. If you have the paper, always better paper. Again, if you, it's like reading a book, right? The difference between reading a real book and a Kindle or an iPad, a book is much better. You're holding it, you gotta balance it, you gotta remember where things are. You're engaging more parts of your body than just your eyes, right? So that's the reason this is on paper because it's an analog interface. So I'm gonna ask you some questions and I'm gonna take you through some training and we're gonna get a baseline. The first thing we're gonna do is get a baseline. You know, success is kind of funny, right? A lot of times we measure our success by what we, where we're not doing it. It's always good to measure sex, success looking backwards and just to see how far you've come, right? So we wanna establish a baseline for your entire group um, of your mental processing right now and then we'll check in against it later. So the first thing I want you to do is to look up at the arrow in the upper left-hand corner. Now the reason we use arrows, I use professional athletes, Navy SEALs, fourth graders, learning disabilities, we always start with an arrow because it's the simplest symbol that requires a decision. You look at an arrow, oh that's an up arrow, or that's a right arrow. So if I ask you to look at the arrow in the upper left hand corner, what direction is it pointing? Right. And what color is it? Red. Okay, good, so two things right there. First, I ask you to say it out loud, right? Because we want to improve the connections between your brain, eyes, ears, and mouth. So everything we do going forward, I want you to say it as loud as you can to kind of energize those connections. The other thing you did is you used that basic thinking process, break it down, think it through, and execute, right? So you had to strip out all the other arrows and focus on the one I asked you for. You had to break down the data that was there, think through what you were gonna do with it, color or direction, and then you had to execute on what I asked you for. That same process is critical to anything you do in your life, whether you're studying, playing sports, it doesn't matter. So now we're gonna have a little fun, right? We're gonna baseline for the entire group. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to time the group as you go through this next baseline. The way you do the baseline is I want you to read off all the arrows on the page, left to right, left to right, just like you're reading a biology book, right? Just like a book, left to right, left to right, left to right, top to bottom, only the directions though. So right, left, down, up, Try not to follow with a finger if you can. That's a natural way to make it easier. The problem is then you're only focusing on one arrow and as we go through this training, you're gonna find your perspective drop back, which is where we want it, and then selectively focus. So left to right, only directions out loud, but to kind of simulate the stress of real life, we're gonna make it a race, okay? We're gonna make it a race. Some will be faster, some will be slower, it doesn't matter. This is really for you to appreciate your processing ability right now. So when I say go, I want you to go as fast as you can. Don't even worry about mistakes, just go as fast as you can. And then when you're done, raise your hand and we'll just get a range for the group, okay? We'll get a range for the group, raise your hand when you're done, but I will give you a hint, because this is a race and a contest, it'll be easier for you if you go louder. All right, so everybody ready? On your mark, get set, go. Very good, just raise your hand when you're done. Excellent, good, good, keep going, very good. Keep going, excellent, excellent. 
Very good. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, just keep your hand up. Excellent, excellent, okay, good. Very normal range, right? About 53 seconds to about a minute 20, very normal, but kind of a mess, right? <laughs> that is how you're processing right now, especially under pressure and when there's a lot of distractions, right? So we want to try to improve that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to train your brain, oops, train your brain using four cross. So if you have the sheet there, just go ahead and fold it in half vertically like this. And you guys keep these, right? I'm going to tell you how you can use these on your own as well. Fold in half, four across. My daughter calls this a hot dog fold, right? So four across. Now we're going to start targeting different parts of executive function that are critical to our sex success. The first one is the one we developed this program for was to improve anticipation. Very, very important. Color is a different part of your brain than, uh, than direction. Directions are starting to become easy, so we want to put a color at the end so your brain has to anticipate it has to do something different. Very simple, three directions in a color, right? Right, left, down, blue is the first row. Difference is it's not a race. I want you all to try to stay together, and it might take a few rows to get there, but a couple notes about that. First of all, when you have to stay together, you have to focus on your decision. You also have to focus on people around you. So in the beginning, it might be a little bit hard, but eventually you're all going to get in sync. This is very, very powerful for teamwork, for relations, for anything where you have to do something with someone else. If you can sense where they are, where you are, it's very powerful. So I'm going to lead you off with the first row, three directions and a color. I want you to say the first row with me and then just keep going. By the way, the, it's very, very important. One of the really differentiators of my program is I don't worry about accuracy, we worry about speed and smoothness. If you stop to try to fix your mistake, you're going to throw everybody else off, right? So you got to keep going. If you make a mistake, just keep going in rhythm with everybody else, knowing that your mistake will probably make it harder for the person next to you, right? And you're going to train their brain even better. So the other reason we don't worry about mistakes is often they're just what we call a brain hiccup. You know, a lot of times you're in a conversation, you say the wrong thing. It's just because our brain, when it's under pressure, is going to say the first thing you can think of. Very, very common, right? So you might say color instead of a direction. Nobody cares. Your brain's going to sort that out. OK, so I'll count you out down for the first row. Say it with me. Go all the way down the page to the bottom. Try to stay together as best you can. Ready? Let's go. Right, left, down, blue. Excellent. I'm very impressed by how well you stayed together, right? Because you're kind of scattered around. You were able to stay together while you were doing this. And that's the anticipation piece, right? The next piece that's very important is pattern recognition. Any of you psychology majors know how important pattern recognition is, right? It determines our relationships. It also determines our memory. And obviously, in anything we do, right? If you're an athlete, pattern recognition is huge. Your patterns, your opponent's patterns. The quicker you can pick those up, the better. So this is going to be a very simple pattern. We're just going to say direction, color, direction, color. OK, so if you say direction, next one will be color. We always start with a direction. If you say color, the next one will be direction. Same thing. I'll lead you off of the first row, and you guys go all the way down the, the page, just like you did last time. Excellent. So ready? Let's go right, yellow, down, blue.
actually, Brad, I'm actually impressed. A lot of people struggle with that, right? If you struggle with that one, it's because of something I didn't tell you about. In order to do that one, you had to focus, right? If you lost focus, you kind of fell out of that pattern. One of the most powerful benefits of this program, and we're just saying silly arrows, right? But you have to focus. ADHD, all kind of processing, all those kinds of issues we can fix pretty quickly because we're training your brain to focus, not because you're consciously trying to focus, your brain is just focusing so it can do the exercises. Third part of executive function we wanna work is working memory, holding something in your short-term memory and executing on it, right? Someone tells you, your parents tell you something, your teacher tells you something, you wanna be able to remember it so you can execute on it. For this, very simple, we're just gonna translate the colors to corresponding fruit. So red is apple, yellow is banana, lime, green is lime, and blue is blueberry. So apple, banana, lime, blueberry is the first row. Same thing, I'll lead you off. You go all the way down the page. You won't need to write it down. Again, if you make a mistake, it's okay, right? So don't worry about it. Ready, let's go. Apple, banana, lime, blueberry. Lime, apple, lime, lime, blueberry, Great, so not so hard so far, right? You kind of adjust. One of the things you're gonna find is in the big top of the page, you might be thinking consciously about getting it right, and then about halfway down, you're kind of in the flow, right? Not thinking about it, and then a conscious thought will pop in. What did he say, or I'm doing pretty good here, or something, right, it'll pull you out, and then you go right back into the flow down to the end. Okay, now we're gonna start combining these. Anticipation and memory. So this time it'll be three directions and a fruit. So right, left, down, blueberries the first row. I'll lead you off again, same thing, all together. By the way, I'm, I'm trying to rush, out. there's some certain milestones I wanna to get to or, and I wanna make sure we get it all in the time. So if I speak too fast, just try to go along with me or raise your hand if I need to repeat something. So ready, three directions in a fruit. R let's go right, left, down, blueberry. Down, fresh, up. Now, I could hear this, I don't know if you noticed it, but that was actually a little bit easier than the first one with the color. Wasn't well, it nice? There's a reason for that. We're tricking your brain now to try to get into flow state or what we call being in the zone. One of our neuroscientists from Northwestern says when you practice these exercises, you can get yourself into that flow state. The reason is because when it was a color, it was a different part of your brain. Now you look ahead, see the color, you have to translate it to the fruit. So your brain starts to push the regular directions, which it knows is easy down in the unconscious. So you're making the same quality, same decisions, but they're, they're smoother, and they're starting to be in your unconscious. So now, the next one we're gonna do, if you notice each one of these is a little bit harder each time, there's a reason for that. Our brains are kind of like our bodies, but they, again, they, uh, they change so much faster, right? You lift a 10 pound weight your whole life, you'll only be able to lift 10 pounds. You always wanna make it heavier. Every time we make the brain work harder, it's gonna to change to handle the load. That's why we use such a simple symbol and make it harder and harder and harder. A Couple of amazing things about what happens in the brain when we use this type of stimulation. One, wherever your brain is struggling the most to do what we ask it to do, that's where the changes are gonna happen the fastest. Because that's where the tension is, that's where it will improve, it's the speed and connection. 
and speed and power of the connections in those areas. Another amazing thing about our brains is they'll rewire around damage. That's why this is so powerful for concussions, for Alzheimer's, different areas where we have uh, even a, a young woman I work with with 12 non-cancerous brain tumors, you know, 70 IQ, by the time we were done, she was back operating well in school, right? Because we can rewire the brain around whatever damage is there because we're not trying to fix anything, we're just trying to train the brain to do what it needs to do to be successful. So changes happen fast, wherever you're struggling, which is why wherever you're struggling, just keep doing it and you'll be amazed at how quickly that will get better. So all that leading up to this one, this hard one, we're gonna bring the color back in, right? So this time it's direction, color, direction fruit. Okay, so right yellow down, blueberry is the first row. And I'll, I'll lead you off again. Ready? Let's go. Right, yellow, down, blueberry. Excellent, right? Hard. I mean, if, if I'd started with that one, you probably all had a, would have had a class to go to or something, right? Because it was hard. But because your brain is changing each time we make it a little bit harder, you were able to do that one. So one more variation of this, we're going to go back and add our anticipation. So just go open your page up all the way. And I will put this back here. So we're going to bring all these different components in. And we're going to spread out our pattern of direction, I mean, of fruit, color and fruit. Three directions color, three directions fruit. So right, left, down, blue, up, right, up, banana. But this time, instead of me leading you off, I'm just going to count you down. And I want you guys to go ahead and start. You're doing a really good job of staying together. Go down the whole page. Three directions color, three directions fruit. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Excellent, excellent, right? So anticipation, memory, all those things, pattern recognition. So now we're going to do one more baseline. Remember the baseline we started with? Let's see if we notice any difference. So when I say go, I want you to go as fast as you can, only directions, no color, no fruit, top to bottom, left to right. Raise your hand when you're done. This is a race, so go as fast as you can and as loud as you want. <laughs> okay, and we'll see what happens to our range. Ready, on your mark. 
Get set, go. So, team significant, uh, time is going to be faster, right? So, five seconds faster on the, fi on, the, on the fast end and about 11 seconds faster on the slow run. But you guys notice a difference, right? Even with that little bit of training, you were able to go faster and more focused. So, um, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm getting the, the timer. So, there, there's something I really want to go through, with, want to add to this. I'm going to get as much as I can before we have to stop. We really, really want to add your hands, okay? So... Fold it in half again, and I'll tell you why. Two reasons we want to engage your hands. We'll do the half page, save some time. Two reasons. One, we're making your brain faster, but almost everything to do with our hands, especially athletes, right? Or you're keyboarding or driving a car. We want the longer neurons from your brain and your hands to be faster, plus left side of the brain controls right side of the body and vice versa. So when we engage both sides of your, of your brain at the same time, we're improving left brain, right brain connections. So just like that picture earlier, we're going to engage all four lobes, both hemispheres and memory, simultaneously when we do this. So very simple. What I want you to do, all together in a group, say just the directions, so right, left, down, up, while you tap your hands on something. It could be the chair in front of you, or it could be your legs. You want all ten fingers to hit something at the same time you make a decision. That's going to send those signals up to your brain. Okay, and I'll count you guys down again. Go through it, only directions, the only thing we're adding is you're tapping, so you're going to have to balance your page on your lap or something, but it's important that you use both hands, right? We want both sides of your brain working. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Right, left, down, up, down, Okay, good, good. So, so really, really quick, quick, what I want you to do now is I want you to do the same thing with your tapping, but let's go back and say direction, color, direction, fruit. Okay, what we're trying to do is give your brain something else to think about, so it's separating from your hands. Neuroscientists call these zombie systems, right? Kids like that name. Zombies around to kill you, but they're not thinking about it. We want your hands doing what they need to do while your brain's doing what it needs to do, but in sync. So direction, color, direction, fruit, both hands tapping on something. Ready? Three, two, one, go. So there's a couple more of these I'd like to do with a half page, but I think I'm running out of time, so I, I want to skip ahead 
and we'll just do one more of the base lines. But this time, for time, we'll just do the half page, okay? As fast as you can, it's a race. The only difference now is we're adding the tapping, okay? The whole overhead of your tapping is going to become so easy you don't even feel it. So we'll do the half page this time. Again, raise your hand when, we're done. when you're done. We'll see what kind of time we get. Most important thing, all directions, no color, no fruit, fast as you can, loud as you'd like, but with your tapping now. On your mark, get set, go. I think I have like two minutes here. I want to leave you with some things. First of all, if you send me an email or use the information on the back, I will send you a recap of what we did and ways you can practice. There's a couple more ways we want to do with the hands to make them completely independent. The most important thing to take away from today is that last thing we did on the half page to do it on the full page, right? If you do a full page of arrows with that race as fast as you can, you can do it with someone else, you can do it on your own, with your tapping, we call that the speed drill. You very easily, most people already would be down around a minute or so. It's a one minute neuro primer. You can use that before classes, before athletics. We work it right into to sports programs. Uh, at the Center of Excellence, we worked it right into the beginning of classes before studying. Do it at home for your homework. I guarantee you, you will start learning faster, remembering better, reacting faster with more focus and faster thinking. So I'd love to for you to send me, and also then send me some feedback, and I'll send you those instructions. So thank you very much. I think we have to head to the lobby. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I mean, I'd stay here all day if I can, but I think our, our time is up. Um, uh, so is that it? We just yeah. go, okay, great, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>